Okay. Okay, folks. So, if we see the paper of Saturday, first important news chaos after firms get three months to get license for lip, uh, laptop imports. Now, this is an example of how you can get into this uh, license.com Raj, but apart from that, it's an example of bad governance, folks. Now, when we talk about, if you see your paper number two, GS paper number two, you, you have governance topic in it. Now, when you are preparing for governance, I mean, you are, you are, there are these, these measures, there are, there are these elements of good governance. Uh, usme transparency, accountability and, and uh, participation are some of the tenets of, of governance that you need to follow. And when and, and, and everyone would write that. See, everyone would know good governance and, and how to, and, and different different aspects of it. But how do you fill up your, your meat of the answer is through uh, issues like these. That you, you, you can write that the government is not taking any passive participative measure in, in deciding about consulting uh, these these uh, these firms regarding whether they are banning or not. There is not no transparency in measures. So the reason why the government has done it earlier, uh, you could import whatever laptops that you want to uh, want to do uh, without taking any permission. But now you need to take a permission. You have added a rider to it, which is basically a license raj. This is something that existed in India before 1991 when we had this license permit raj. So, so it reduces the uh, the ease of doing business. Why the government is doing doing this? The government is saying that we want to promote uh, our PLI scheme. We want these manufacturers to produce in India. We don't want them to import from other countries. And one of the major reasons to to target this is because of the fact that seventy five percent of your imports we import five billion dollar worth of uh, laptops every year, and seventy five percent of those imports come from China. And we are trying to hit China hard. But at the same point of time, there has to be some kind of reasonability. There has to be some kind of consensus building. There has to be some kind of participation, uh, some kind of transparency and accountability. How did the government come to this, this decision? And then you are notifying this on one day's notice. So, so uh, I mean, this is, this is, this is not fair. Uh, it's, it's something like uh, after COVID, you, you are being informed that tomorrow is your exam. Uh, and, and you can't, you can't, this is, this is not, this is not a class test where you can have surprise, surprise elements. So this goes against all the tenets of, of a, of a, of a good governance. And that is why this should be uh, restricted. Such, such need, these are, the, these are typically called as knee jerk reactions. So, so this knee jerk reactions to, to the private sector should not be given. Another example of this would be the the one uh, the news uh, just below this older I am kept in dark government gets there government gets a, uh, a say in the affairs of the new ones uh, why are the new ones now again here uh, you have the older I and the newer I you have the government has already passed the I am bill whereby now the now the visitor will become the president of India and the president of India can elect the chairperson of the board of the, of of uh, I and then also those removal clauses and the continuation clauses will be through the visitor. And visitor basically will work on the aid and advice of the government of India. And uh, uh, and the new IIMs, uh, and again, you have not consulted the old IIMs. And these are all institutions of eminence and you are not consulting them with regarding regarding their status, regarding their autonomy. So, uh, again, this shows, this shows that there is something wrong in the governance. Now, what the directors of the new IMs are saying is that the government needs to have its say. And they were, of course, acquiesced to this decision. Why? Because the new IMs are anyways dependent, heavily dependent on funding from the central government. Whereas the old IMs, the IM Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Calcutta, Kozikot, Indore, Lucknow, these are the old IMs. These are old IMs do not need any kind of, uh, because they have a very, very, very robust uh, system. They have a very robust alumni. They have a very robust fee system. So, so they don't need those fundings and that's why they were not even called for the, uh, for, for these work. So again, no transparency, no, no, no participation in business. So these are, these are decisions that you can take up and then fill up your answers, both in ethics and in your paper number two uh, of your, of your GS. So, so this will become the meat of your answers when you're, when you're writing. So apart from that, people, they will not ask you about directly about the IM bill. They will not ask you about the firms getting three three months uh, and now now this has been revised by the way so instead of giving one month till till you've been given a three month license uh, deadline that within three months you need to get a license to import anything from and this license is given from an organization this organization you should remember 
इट्स कॉल्ड एज डायरेक्टरेट जनरल ऑफ फॉरन ट्रेड डी जी एफ टी ठीक है नाउ यू कैन रीड दट आर्टिकल यू बी एबल टू इजिली अंडरस्टैंड दिस आर्टिकल एंड दप्लीकेशन आई वॉन्ट टू टॉल वेर दिल्स कम टू this news there are couple of news uh, you can read news which is below but i'll i'll cover i'll be covering this now export ban pushes the global ri- rice prices to nearly 12 year high now uh, we already know what the government has done the the and you've been following this and again this is an example of mismanagement of the government with both with respect to its, its food prices as well as the, as well as so the sending a very wrong signal to the world market that we are not a reliable supplier of of food grains now what has happened is that in india uh, the food stock of rice with fci on july 1 uh, which which is the cut off date is at a 5 year 5 6 year low and apart from that the problem is that we we already know that there are some some areas of india which has which has received scanty rainfall and we'll read this in 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 uh, this thing as well overall our rainfall is above above average lpa but there uh, there are regions of telangana there are regions of of maharashtra there are regions of of a little bit of eastern india where there the rainfall has been a little deficit and there are regions like punjab where you have over over rain or i mean uh, excessive rainfall as well because of which which is it is possible that the, the production of rice uh, might might be below uh, that which was last year now because of this uh, what the government has done is that it has banned the export of uh, except except for uh, basmati uh, except for basmati and non uh, parboiled uh, <coughs> non parboiled uh, rice the government has banned export of all rice now what this happened uh, and and earlier last year they had banned the export of wheat now wheat does not matter for us because wheat market if you see wheat has a huge market in the world and we are a very small supplier we only used to i mean in 2000 2122 because of the russia ukraine war we exported somewhere around 7 6 7 million tons of wheat and this is not a we are not a major player but when we when we talk about rice in case of rice the world market of exports is somewhere around 40 million tons and of that 40 million tons we export somewhere around 23 million tons we are 40% more, i mean um, uh, around 40% yeah the rice market is around 55 million tons and we export around 23 million tons the the uh, we we export basically 40% of world's uh, rice and we are a major player and and rice is one of the major consumption items for a lot of countries in the world and and, um, and in general if india is not going to export rice there is no country to fill up the gap that india is leaving and which will leave which will lead to a higher uh, inflation which is seen by this fao index that is there the uh, united nations fao index on on uh, rice price index and and which shows that it is it, it is on on a on a high and at the same point of time this also has ramifications for world nutrition as well so this is this is one of the major problems uh, which which india, india uh, is, is facing in terms of its rice policy making the other article we we've, we've covered it quite a few times we have covered it in depth but if you want to read it you can read this particular article despite ties with us india remains strategic maintain strategic autonomy in taking decisions Uh, I think someone's so uh, so strategic autonomy. Uh, you can you can read. We we've done a lot of articles on on this. So you, uh, I mean I mean uh, if you want you can read this. Uh, then let's come to uh, page number fourteen. This license uh, uh, Raj dot com is basically the same thing, but it doesn't doesn't only tell you about this. It also t- tells you about that we are going to this socialist past. we are increasing bureaucratic when when you give licenses you are giving uh, a veto to the bureaucracy that you can give license to person a and not to b so again you are increasing red tapeism you have added another layer of permission uh, without 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 any taking without any any consultation exercise uh, the reason is that the pli scheme of the government of india is not taken well in case of laptops and you wanted to curb the exports of laptops from uh, from china which basically contributes 75% of your 5 billion dollar of uh imports that you uh, you you basically basically getting in case of laptops then but at the same point of time this is not just a one off issue uh this has been seen across issues that we are moving towards that license permit raj because we have already seen this in the case of rice and wheat that we are, we are going back we have also seen in the case of you see the last paragraph we have also seen very recently in case of the liberalized remittance scheme 
uh, where your your credit card limits were being set and then uh, rest of it was being taxed remember that uh, those articles where where the government was trying to put a limit on how much you can spend up to 5 lakhs or 7.5 lakhs so again but the, then the government junked that proposal so all of that shows that yes there is this element of of going back to that pre 1991 Uh, era and which should be completely checked uh, and nibbed uh, right in the bud because those create inefficiencies in the market. Uh, the other article is for a rainy day. Uh, again, this article is talking about the kind of uh, uh, that, that that although the monsoon has turned out to be better than uh, that than what is expected, but at the same point of time, rice in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, West Bengal are still the the. Uh, the, the it could be in a deficit because some parts of this these areas are in deficit uh, but at the same point of time uh, you you also see haryana and punjab is all, are also the the farmers are replanting retransplanting their uh, their paddy crops because of the excessive rainfall that they have got. so rain so rice is definitely an issue at the same point of time there are a couple of more issues so arad and urad arad and urad these two kinds of pulses are also an issue but apart from that the overall overall rice is uh, overall, overall the kharif crop should do well but why why is the government so worried the government is worried because as i told you on 1st of july the food stocks of the country are uh, not not uh, adequate enough and because they are not adequate enough this that is one reason the second reason is the cereal inflation still reeling at somewhere around 12% Uh, that's the second reason and the third reason that the, uh, the that the government is uh, taking these measures is that the uh, we we have already been confirmed that this is going to be an el nino year and because this is going to be an el nino year there is going to be an impact impact on the rabi crops as well because these rabi crop uh, crops also need moisture and uh, and and certain uh, 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 heat uh, and certain cold environment should not be too much excessive heat as well so because of that we might expect that the rabi crop is might also get affected so all and and you have the general elections coming in in, in april and may so underlying with, because of these all underlying factors the government has decided uh, to to ban all these uh, commodities so this is then <clears throat> the next article which which is an important article uh, for you to understand is uh, cheetah's return so uh, this article is one of is by one of the Uh, directors of uh, uh, of project cheetah so i want you to read about this project cheetah i want you to also read about if you are writing about this see this is this is one topic that i'm expecting in mains 2023 but also might be introduced in 2024 prelims or mains translocation of animals is a very difficult thing remember that those those whispering uh, elephant that there was this elephants in munnar that they, they were they were going on rampage Uh, uh after translocation you can add that thing to it but at the same point of time this article also talks about that how do you acclimatize uh, the these these uh, uh these cheetahs you need to give them time uh, because because of the translocation uh, uh, the, some some amount of mortality was expected but at the same point of time that doesn't uh, i mean i mean the, uh, that doesn't absolve the government of misgovernance here as well because if you remember those those cheetah experts from namibia and south africa as as some already submitted to the supreme court that they were kept in complete dark regarding the health of these cheetahs and uh, the 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 uh, the ability the team which is handling these cheetahs is uh, is woefully inadequate and untrained uh, so so all of these issues uh, were were basically there now this article basically talks about the fact that uh, we have introduced these these cheetahs from namibia and and uh, actually if you if you see these are all ethiopian uh, fauna which have been colonized by in india through the persian uh, uh, through persian rulers in ancient times then tiger like like tigers leopards and lions these uh, i mean tigers leopards and lions are ambush predators so what they do is they hide and then they they target whereas cheetah is very different from them cheetah will outrun these Uh, all these animals, so they tire these animals, and in a sense, how do they equalize? They they keep their the prey very healthy, the lot very healthy. So who will not be able to outrun a cheetah or old will not be able to outrun a particular uh, outrun a particular cheetah, and therefore, what see the ecological system? How the nature is in this equilibrium to control the population of the prey? You have the cheetah who will hunt all of these animals who are who are who are sick who are who are not able to defend themselves, and the nature takes its own way. 
so so think think of it think of it uh, in that way so uh, they are very important for the ecosystem and if you want the prey and very important if you want apex so you are you have this you have this uh, uh, you have this uh, pyramid shape ecosystem uh, uh, you might you must read this in your in your uh, this thing as well uh, in your environment pyramidical shape of ecosystem in in, terrest- in terrestrial environment and when it comes to uh, marine environment is inverted pyramid okay just read about it what what am i talking about the ecosystem uh, being being now uh, because cheetah lion and all these are apex predators for them to survive the the the, the uh, all, all all the all the other elements of of this uh, uh, keeping keeping the prey uh, uh, a top carnivore a top carnivore at the apex of the food chain can sustain its population when the lower trophic levels are functioning auto, optimally so all these trophic levels so apex is is the on the top and all the there are different different trophic levels so you are herbivores and then you have your uh, uh, i mean i mean omnivores and then you have herbivores so all these trophic levels should also be optimal only then the top, top person will be able to survive so uh, so this is this is what what is there we need to manage that as well at the same point of time uh, conservationists have uh, I've, I've also failed to provide the correct nar- narrative uh, in using indigenous species as, uh, as as flagships and investing in their conservation for example with the great indian bustard the great indian bustard is a flagship se- is a flagship species now i want you to read about what are flagship species as well okay so what are flagship species and and uh, in grasslands and dif- in different different in different different uh, uh, environments what are the flagship species uh, 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 this thing uh, uh flagship species you can read about that as well so the great indian bustard uh, they are facing a new kind they are facing a, a different challenge because they get uh, entangled with these power lines and then they and, and then they die because they fly and then they, uh, they those power, high transmission power lines they they, uh, they come in contact with them and their wings come in contact with them and then they die so this this is a major issue when comes comes to restoration so uh, we need to also see restoration of prey when when we are talking about cheetah and uh, and all these rest- restoration so we need to take care of the prey elements as well that there is a healthy uh, prey element but at the same point of time you have to understand that cheetah's area of operation is huge and we do not have such huge uh, uh, protected areas so we need to manage in long term that how do we manage because these these cheetahs will repopulate as well they will expand their area as well but at the same point of time cheetahs are not known to attack they at times attack uh, 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 your your cattle but then you, the article says you can easily compensate the, the these people for for this so that they can also understand that even if they kill your cattle uh, i mean you the government will instantaneously uh, refund you whatever whatever is there at the same point of time uh, you have to make Uh, all the all the communities who are living uh, outside out to outside or in in the buffer zone of this protected area uh, the area uh, as 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 uh, collaborators that as participants as stakeholders because all of them will also get to gain out of this if if uh, if there is eco tourism that is promoted all these societies will increase all these buffer in buffer zone all these hotels will come all these all these clubs clubs in the sense the, these these eco natural clubs will come tourism will come so all of this will increase the economy and increase the uh, increase the or, or uh, help increase the development of these uh, society so you have to make them a part of the system you need to educate them this is the other part the article is saying then the last part of the article talks about that cheetah mortality was expected uh, but at the same point of time the reasons of expectation were very different uh, uh, it, it was said that it might they might be attacked by dog packs or starvation or disease or road kill but it's not that it's because of some kind of mismanagement for example we already know about the collar issue now what happens is that the adaptation this is this is the issue what is called as photo period now in southern in in in, in southern latitudes i mean you have different winters and you have different winters here now they came from a winter so what the, what happens during the winter time is that and that happens with us as well that the fur of the animal increases and because the fur because they are used to that winter light the fur of, there there is a season to which in which the fur of the animal will increase but what has happened because of the translocation uh, we have had a we have had a hot and humid monsoon so hot and humid monsoon the fur would uh, did not increase and because the fur did not increase the 
and then the collar that was the radio collar that was there that was causing some kind of irritation and these animals scratch their uh, necks and because of that maggots were there and because of maggots again they, they there was infection which was not treated and ultimately they died so it will take time for these animals to adapt to the indian winters and then their their season of getting fur will also change once that is there then the animals will adapt so this is th- these are the reasons that have been given and uh, we need to give them time but at the same point of time proper management needs to be done so this is a very very important article with respect to conservation and all the different issues uh, community issues and and, and and how to manage the prey in the lower trophic levels so these are important issues that you need to cover the other article is that of menka gurswami she i'm a huge fan of hers in terms of jnk and other states if you want to read it's a more of a political uh, article and then no right to shame is manipur uh again we have read too many articles on manipur so uh, uh this is something which interests me uh, uh not just not just as a upsc aspirant but also as a lawyer so now what has happened is this is, this is a topic which can be quoted in governance in, in ethics as well uh that that uh, especially in ethics uh, i mean i mean or or in even in essay i mean i can i can easily quote this particular article but but see the the way that this article has been has been uh, sewn and, and and has been constructed beautiful way how you should write an essay as well now at times you can start your essays and all all of these with questions as well so the questions that that menka guru swami is asking is that uh, should the state tax our winnings uh, due to chance or should they or or is it because of luck so so suppose i'm tossing a coin so tossing a coin if i'm winning something this is an element of luck but suppose i uh, i i am betting on say uh, ba- I, I, i i'm betting on the basis of car racing where i'm analyzing different different cars i'm i know what kind of tires these cars use what is the background of drivers what is the engine that the car is using and then on the basis of which i am i am i'm betting on a car that is not luck that is that is uh, that is skill that i'm in, uh, involved similarly this article talks about playing rummy so there is this company called gamescraft which was basically which which uh, which has which has a tax dispute with the state of karnataka with respect to gst now uh, whether, whether the gst should be there on their winnings or, or, or on on their transactions or not what this company says is that see boss we are not we are not managing money we are, we are, it is not our money there are some online players which which are which are playing they are contributing money i we keep money in the fiduciary responsibility we are we just a intermediary and there are winners we give this money to the winners and then we charge as a transaction as as a transaction fee and an and, and, a, and an online subscription or or an online platform fee this is what we do and we are paying uh, service tax on that uh, we paying the gst on that but this is this is uh, where where the government uh, of karnataka said no boss that this is not a game of this is betting this is game of uh luck now uh, uh this the the supreme court this is this uh, the uh, the karnataka high court had declared that no this is rummy is a game of um uh, game of game of uh, this thing uh, uh, skill that it's something like horse riding uh, riding horse riding also you need to know the horses you need to know the feline uh, the, the the kind of breed that is there and and how uh, uh, whether whether it will be able to run fast or not so just like just like this uh i give you the example of of uh, car racing as well just like this rummy also involves memory tricks that which card was there and how to play so so that because of that reason this can be not be classi- classified as betting or gambling and it gives a beautiful definition of betting and gambling as well where you are putting something at stake knowing that it is risky in consideration of something and hoping that you will get some kind of gain out of it the beautiful definition this is how legal definitions are given so 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 it said that this is not this is not uh, rummy playing rummy is not a uh, is not a skill is not a uh, game of luck and it cannot be taxed uh, the way that this section uh, entry 6 of of schedule 3 of cgst reads it is it cannot be covered like betting gambling and and lottery uh, uh, things that can come under this are teen patti teen patti if you know three card game that can come coin toss um, uh, all of these can come 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 under but again this is a gray area uh, uh, where where will you stop on this uh, i mean i mean uh, then then how about dream 11 dream 11 is also something like game of skill then so 
these are these are areas that uh, that that the government is deciding and now the supreme court is going to decide what is game of luck and what is what is game of uh, skill uh, so this is the article it's a beautiful article uh, of governance as well ethics as well uh, and and how you can how you can construct your arguments so this is where i i like this article then um page number 17 if you want to read the uh, uh, the political news four years without 370 you can read it uh, peru uh, fossil find i found it interesting but not for upsc uh, then the article that i really find uh, interesting was was and it's a very very important article folks i'm telling you time and again prepare summaries of these three acts whenever they come dpdp date, uh, digital uh, data uh, digital personal data protection uh, act then you have the Digital India Act and then you have the Telecom Bill Act. Telecom Bill Act has not been, uh, I mean the other two bills will come. But these are the three bills that you need to be completely aware about with a critical analysis of them. Uh, uh, not just for this year, I mean this year means of course yes, they, they, they might ask you directly on it. They might, uh, they might ask indirectly on it. There might be application in multiple places. But uh, but you should know about these uh, three things because uh, these these are important areas. Now, this is also an example where the government has taken huge consultative. This could also be an example of good governance where the government has taken a consultative exercise into um, uh, into policy making, where uh, all these parts of the society, the civil society, the technological companies, the government, uh, all of them have been consulting for the last five years for for iterating and reiterating. Uh, this particular bill now but but the final bill uh, the, the benchmark of the bill started with the GDPR uh, which which is the regulation that is run in uh, in European Union which is one of the stringent uh, uh, ways of, of defining uh, uh, this thing uh, your your, um, uh, your your digital protection rights uh, but now we have moved more towards the China model so if you if you if you, if you see if you draw a spectrum uh, the spectrum started from uh, the most most liberal uh, would be would be uh, your 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 uh, US uh, and you could you could have China as an authoritarian one and then you you have uh, European European which which basically gives a lot of power to its citizen and now if you see where in this particular triangle if you draw a triangle where India is moving towards India is moving towards that China uh, route so that is how you can draw this particular case. So if I was an aspirant and if I uh, if I would I would describe this uh, in this way I would draw this triangle and then then I show so now if you see uh, uh, the bill uh, uh, the, the issues with the bill now uh, issues with the bill the criticism is that the data protection authority of India uh, basically will decide who to give exemptions and who not to give exemptions and you have given a carte blanche to the government of india and it's all it's uh, or not and all its instrumentality of the state now what does the instrumentality of the state mean so you can define geo as instrumentality of state and give it complete uh, veto as well so so uh, it's it's kind of uh, uh, regulation where you have the burden on the private sector but the government is exempted out of it the second thing is who is on on, on the board of the data protection authority of india who is going to uh, select its members is there a role of judicial members there or not these are other issues then the government's counter is that we are we are facing terrorism and other stuff and because of which we need we we, we have to have a regulation in the indian context which you can give it uh, your own spin uh, so so in a, in a critical analysis you need to write that india's case is different from that of europe and the us and that of china and therefore we need to have a data protection bill for our own con uh, for our own environment for our own ecosystem then multi-pronged strategy is that we we, uh, we have the digital uh, protection bill for for personal data protection we have the digital india bill for the non-personal data protection and then we have the telecom bill which is coming uh, to regulate all these entities uh, which is just uh, so so the uh, digital india bill is going to replace all uh, your entire it act uh, the information technology act will be replaced by this digital india bill and then your your all other other bills with respect to regulation of the telecom sector OTTs will all be done through the telecom or the telecommunications bill. We'll read about it in the uh, in the economy section. Uh, privacy uh, privacy law in the worldwide EU model the highest right to privacy personal protection and only only certain exemptions are given to the state with respect to security defense public safety and and uh, uh, and and 
uh, you also have this regulation of big tech there that that if there are gatekeepers like amazon and flip uh, amazon and, uh, and and your your apple and google if they are uh, if they are the gatekeepers they are giants then they might be fined heavily if they if they misuse their uh, powers uh, the us model is basically focusing more on more on the state that the state will not uh, use this data but the private sector can use this data after getting consent so it is more of a liberal regime with respect to the private sector but not with the state the china model uh, puts in heavy penalties and it and regulates the data that you will not export the data of Chinese citizens without taking due permission of the Chinese government. So these are the three kinds of these kinds of uh, uh, methods that are there. We move more towards the Chinese model. Now two more articles that I want you to read. One is a fantastic personality uh, who you can uh, name in your essays as well. Someone who was who's uh, back in the shadows. Uh, an anecdote you can maybe write an anecdote on on this in your essay as well. So things like these will will give richness to your answers. Now this is about and and people have not heard about him. Uh, in fact, this, this is the first time I'm hearing about this person. Uh, now this person called as Morris Chang is the one person who is behind the tele the the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company TSMC, which is one of the major major giants which produces. Uh, all the semiconductor, all the semiconductor chips. It is only in the production uh, way. It, it does not. It does not uh, design it. The designing part is done by Apple and, and Nvidia. You should know about this company, folks. Nvidia. Nvidia provides a lot of these. All these. All these supercomputing chips. All these not not supercomputing. All these uh, AI chips that are there are all powered by uh, Nvidia. Uh, it was. It used to be a gaming company, but now it's a completely designed company which which powers all the AI projects. So, so AI basically all the, your heavy uh, AI stuff needs. Uh, so, so these graphic cards are produced by this company called as Nvidia. Now, by the way, this is a more more than a trillion dollar company now. So, uh, for Nvidia, for for Apple, and for all other all other companies, this company is producing. And um, and he says that I want always wanted to uh, be in the shadows, but now I'm no longer there. But at the same point of time, he says that we can every any day we can choke. But it's a very good story of how the hub is built and then 95 and by 92 he is now of, of uh, the semiconductor. Then the last article is the telecom bill as I have told you. Now this telecom bill is basically going to have relaxations for the OTT platform. They don't need to earlier there was a talk about getting license uh, for, for WhatsApp and Google and, and all these because they compete with these normal players who have invested crores and crores of rupees for Spectrum. Uh, they have not invested anything in the spectrum, and then and then utilizing the spectrum of these telecom companies, and then then providing services. So, uh, but now this this has been uh, made lighter on on this OTT platforms. Uh, at the same point of time, uh, the other issues is uh, there was there was some talk initially of dilution of try to be only a recommendatory body, but those all have also been uh, junk. At the same point of time. Uh, there is also talk about that if someone like Vodafone Idea, if, if they go bankrupt, then who will own their spectrum? Will it go, the, the talk is that it will go back to uh, the, the telecom uh, industry or should it go to the bank which have lended to uh, the, these companies? So this is another contentious issue and this particular bill will replace three particular acts that are there. So this is the other article that I want you to. So with this. Uh, uh, we, we've completed our, our newspaper analysis folks um, now uh, I might try to reach a couple of you today if I get time uh, I'm not very sure because next one week I have a very very busy schedule uh, uh, so so I will try to reach out to you and I will try that if I can make a group today and I'll ask you on the group uh, whosoever has done it just uh, so that I can then uh, so Thank you very much folks, have a great day and, and study well. Okay, bye.